Hi there, welcome back to the channel and uh, I'm preparing for a trip this evening to Stafford. This is a trip I made uh, almost exactly one year ago today. Um, it's a work trip and there's an event we go to every year. So um, it's, it's, I thought maybe a good chance to do a direct comparison um, with the 3.0 software update which I had at the end of November um, versus the older software which I had on the car this time last year. However, uh, I just checked my, my uh, YouTube video from last year. Last year it was 19 degrees, it was sunny, and today it's 7 degrees, it's been raining heavily, and it's forecast to continue raining heavily. So I'm not sure what direct comparisons we can make um, with, uh, with those weather differences. Anyway, we shall see. Um, I did a quick check, and last year a better route planner had forecast 5 hours and 40 minutes, one hour and 40 minutes of charges and that was forecasting seven minutes at Gretna Green at the Ionity chargers and then 32 at the MFG site at Crow Orchard uh, Road near Chorley. Um, this year there's a few new chargers on the uh, the M6. The main one um, which seems to appeal to the uh, both the Skoda system and the uh, ABRP systems seems to be the Porsche Centre at South Lakes, which is at Carnforth on the M6. Um, it's favouring those, I guess, because the MFG site is, I think, 79 pence per kilowatt hour, and the Porsche one, being part of the Volkswagen Group, is 35 pence on um, the Skoda Power Pack. So as you can see, a better route planner is forecasting a slightly quicker journey time this year by about 41 minutes. Um, and it's suggesting that we stop for 15 minutes at Gretna Green and then 29 minutes at Porsche. However, um, at that time of night, there'll be absolutely nothing at the Porsche garage bar, a, a locked barrier and uh, two charge points. So it's not the place to really be hanging around for 29 minutes. What I think we'll do is we will force the charge um, to stop there we're going to have to have something to eat, so I think we'll stop there for about 35 minutes. Let's see what difference that makes. Yeah, so we'll be back to 98%, so that's great. And then quick 17 minute charge at the Porsche Centre, and it reckons that will then get us to Stafford Ionity at 8%. So having had two charges, the battery will have warmed up. And it'll also be at a nice low state of charge. So I think we will probably see whether we have got the upgraded 125 kilowatt charging ability that model that um, model three. It's taking me back to my Tesla days. That uh, 3.0 software update brings. Okay, so let's have a look at what the Skoda system can do. Uh, as you can see, the 3.0 software now means I can see live avail availability of all of the. Um, Chargers. I've just typed in Ionity Stafford. There are six chargers there. That's where we're going to be going. It, you can see it actually shows that you can use the Skoda PowerPass app, which is good. It's going to take us four hours 57, 258 miles. So that's longer than a better route planner was suggesting. Uh, exactly the same distance. Um, what can we do? Do we do Use the selected route. Four hours fifty-seven. Please drive to the route shown. Your route contains an essential charging stop. Only one charging stop, so that's interesting. It's going to give me a charging stop only at Porsche South Lakes. So that is showing that I will get there and I will have twenty-two percent charge left. And if I then charge up to 65% for 19 minutes, then we will be able to get to um, Stafford. So actually, the Skoda system is doing it with one stop only, but it's coming up with a longer time. Uh, that's interesting. We'll wait and see. So that's nearly five hours that it's suggesting. Um, interesting. However, we're not going to do that because um, when we're traveling this evening, I'm going to um, want to have a, a break for some food um, 
so we're not going to do that anyway we'll uh, we'll maybe try putting that in this evening and, uh, and use the Skoda system um, because it is obviously showing live availability the other reason I like um, using a better route planner is that it will show you um, live availability but now that the car does that as well you can actually get by using that system on its own so as I predicted the weather en route was pretty awful it was strong headwinds really really heavy rain and after an hour and a half the economy was only at 3.2 miles per kilowatt hour but it was also time to eat my colleague and I were both hungry so we decided to stop at Gretna plugged in and went off and had something to eat unfortunately while we were away somebody stopped the charge so we had to restart when we finished we did about uh, six, seven minutes recharge from 51 to 63 percent. It was quite slow because we were half full, but it was enough to get us on our way. So then we drove for one hour, 18 minutes, 71 miles until we reached Porsche and we were at 14 percent. OK, so we're at Porsche South Lakes. Battery is about 20 degrees, the car's at 15%, so we'll see how fast a charge we get here. Ramping up slowly but surely. No, surely we're going to get more than 84. Well, that is disappointing. Is it going to speed up? No. It's going to slow down. I wonder if it's because there's another car charging here. Hmm, that is disappointing. So although the charge rate was disappointing, we then filled the time by watching some Netflix and then got on the way, but 30 minutes had passed before we'd even noticed. So it was time to get back on the road. The weather was still horrible and the efficiency took a real hammering. Okay, journey's end. Stafford. Windy, wet, horrible Stafford. How fast is it going to be? We're at 15%, the battery is at 21 degrees. Here we go, here we go. Oh, come on. Only 90 kilowatts. Only 90 kilowatts. And it's dropping. Why? Wow, that's disappointing. Okay, so we stopped on the return trip from Stafford at Burton and Kendall. Absolutely loads of chargers here, high powered or medium powered with different pricing. Lots of people are on the medium powered ones, so I've had to use the high powered ones, which are 66p. Um, but that means if we charge here to 54%, then we'll get to Gretna with 9% state of charge left, which will be actually quite good for getting a high powered charge. Actually, the car did much better than expected and we arrived with 19%, but my friends, being the really mature types, were convinced there was something dodgy about filming a video in a car. Oh, oh. <laughs> Shut up! Does this have sound recording? Uh-huh, this is video. It is on sound, funnily enough. Oh, my goodness. That's right. Yes. I'll have to... Do you want my grip to be tighter on the steering wheel? She's butt! <laughs> it's a natural. I am a natural. I just think I paid for university.
I'm joking. I'm very much joking. <laughs> You'll love this when it's on YouTube. <laughs> So after they'd had their fun, we grabbed a coffee and charged to 60% because the apple cream chargers are quite expensive. And after that, we set off for home and we arrived back in Livingston with 11%. So I was pretty sure I could manage to find a high speed charge. Okay, so let's see how we get on. Final charge of the trip back from Stafford. It's a BP Pulse 300 kilowatt charger. And as you can see on the screen, uh, you would be able, if that marker wasn't in the way, you'd be able to see. No, it's not showing. There's a green dot showing live availability. The car is down at 10.5% state of charge. The battery was at 16, but I've been doing some yo yo driving. So we've got between 21 and 25 degrees. So that is all good. The trip efficiency we've done 268 miles, 5 hours 11 minutes of driving. We've been at 70 on the motorway the whole way on the cruise control. 3.3 miles per kilowatt hour. So without further ado, I'm going to go get charged and we'll see how it gets on. Well, it looks like there's no 125 kilowatt charging. Not on this ENIAC, anyway. So the charge rate is just dipping below 70 kilowatts, and we're at 44% on the dash, 45% showing on the, the BMS, apparently, according to car scanner. Battery's now up to 30. 34, 35 degrees. Um, so obviously it's really, really warm. That's uh, heating up, but then the car will then start to cool that back down once it starts to drive. So what's the experience been like on this trip with 3.0? Well, it's been really, really easy to do. Um, the navigation system is a lot better. I actually used on the way down pretty much the Skoda navigation system the whole way. Um, a better route planner now and then just really to see how uh, the two compared. Um, on the way down, the efficiency took an absolute battering because of the, the really heavy wind and rain that we were driving through. On the way back, the efficiency has been much better. Um, on the way down, we sat at 67, 68. On the way back, it's been locked at 70, um, other than where there were a couple of parts where there were roadworks. Um, efficiency is 3.3, um, even though we've been driving at that uh, speed limit the whole way. We stopped, first of all, because we needed lunch charged for a few minutes. Then on the next stop at Gretna, where I did need to get a boost in order to get me back home, um, had to use the Apple Green chargers, which uh, they were really fast, but they were just a lot more expensive than the Ionity chargers. But they were, uh, there was a queue at the Ionity chargers. So I thought we'd try the Apple Green. It's a work trip, so I'll be getting expenses. Uh, mileage expenses paid for anyway, so it's uh, it's not so much of an issue. Um, and then finally here, back at, what was I, 11, 12% when I started, really disappointed that the car, although it was at 11%, which I think is the lowest I've ever started a charge, and the battery was hot at between 20 and 23 degrees, it's only charged um, at 97 kilowatts and didn't even hit the 100. So given that it's supposed to be an improved to 125, I'm not sure uh, how effective that's been. I'm not sure under what conditions I would actually get 125 kilowatts. So slightly disappointing. Um, if anyone else has had the 3.0 update and they're on a, an IV60, let me know in the comments below what your experience has been. But um, yeah, I'm slightly surprised and disappointed. Having said that, um, the charge speed has been ridiculously quick. Um, when we stopped at Gretna, uh, my colleagues and I went in, grabbed a coffee, didn't even drink it and came back to the car and we had gone back to 60%, which was more than enough to get us back, uh, back home. So um, it's more than quick enough. It's just not as quick as Skoda are claiming. Let me know in the comments below what you think, what, uh, what experiences you may have had with the 3.0 update. 
Batteries do vary between cars, so I know the, the X variants um, of the Enyaqs, they will charge at a lot faster rates. But if you specifically have had an IV60 and the 3.0 update, let me know how you've got on with the, uh, the charging. One final remark, I've just checked with the, uh, the charger screen. So in 14 minutes, I have gone from 11 to uh, 55%. That's pretty quick. That's, uh, that's quite impressive. Um, I can only imagine how quick it would have been if it had actually delivered the full 125 kilowatts. Anyway, let me know in the comments below how you've got on and I'll see you in another video soon.